Welcome to Zenroku, the podcast where anime meets real life. Today's guest is someone with a passion for MMA, love for the classic anime, and truly an inspiring career. We dive into what makes him tick, how anime shaped his journey, and the lessons he learned along the way. If you're a fan of Voltron or fascinated by the world of professional MMA fighting commentary, you're in for a treat. So please sit back, relax, and let's get right into it with none other than Canada's very own Timmy B. Representing the country, the whole country. It's on my back. What's going on, buddy? How are you? Did I do you right? Yeah, intro? man. What a good intro. Let me just tell you, man, as, as someone who I'm, um, I'm headed towards episode number 200, one of the one things I pride myself on the Fight Insight podcast is doing a good intro to make their guests feel good, to make them feel like, you know, that you know who the hell they are. And so thank you so much. No, it's great. Great intro. Thank you. No problem, no problem. So let's get right in there. First things first, Timmy. Like, you know, you mentioned you love Voltron from the yeah, 80s. What was, what was about Voltron that spoke to both cultures of you growing up with? And um, if you could, what anime character for today uh, would you be and why? Oh, man. Uh, so Voltron, I don't know, man. Like, so I know your podcast goes out audio only as well. So I'm, I'm half Asian, half uh, white, half Canadian. Uh, my dad, my dad was from Hong Kong, Chinese, Portuguese. And so growing up, growing wow. up, I was always like, kind of like, um, I, I, I kind of had two cultures, you know what I mean? Like I was always kind of both. Um, mm-hmm. I grew up in a very multicultural area in, in Toronto. And, um, I don't know, Voltron was like that kind of like that first cartoon as a kid. Like I was born in 77 and, uh, Voltron was that kind of first cartoon that really hit cross culture you know you could go to school and everybody had watched voltron but you knew it was an asian uh thing like you knew it was an asian cartoon you didn't understand what it was like we didn't know the word anime back then you know we just go like oh it's another cartoon but i don't know man that was that was cool as heck man the those those lions transforming and turning into that robot and just everybody wanted it you know nobody had it it was so expensive but uh you know it was a it was a really cool cartoon man it was just like the different uh types of people because i think is in that version like there was a fat guy there was the skinny guy there was the girl right like it was one of the first cartoons it kind of had a little bit of everything and it was kind of really cool to see and everybody was able to kind of identify with one of the 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 lions or one of the the uh pilots and stuff like that right like yeah man it was just a cool cartoon Mm -hmm. i remember that being like the first real anime that everybody was watching but me specifically and and dang it if i still don't love that cartoon man when they redid did you watch the one on Netflix, the Voltron? Uh, yeah, yeah. Really, that cartoon yeah. was amazing, man. Like they yeah. they did a good job with that cartoon. Maybe the last season could have been a little bit better. Like, but uh, the fact that the, the fact that they did the full story arc, and if your listeners have not watched yeah. Voltron, what was that one called? Defender of the Universe, Voltron, I, Legendary I so. Defender, was, uh, something like that. Just go on, go on Netflix and search up Voltron. That is a good, good series, man. Very good, underrated for sure. Very yeah. sure, a hundred percent. I I love Voltron. Like, I, that is classic Voltron. And oh, well, another that's not anime, but I kind of consider it anime is Thundercats. Yeah. Like growing up on, oh man, like Dude. Thunder, Thunder. You know. Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's you know what's so funny when you when I was preparing for this podcast and you were asking me like what's your favorite anime I'm like is Thundercats an anime because that what kind of was. The other, the other one I'd say that I was very close to saying was um, Avatar: The Last Airbender, and as oh, as yes. well as you know, it, it, as well as the second one, oh, as well sorry. as the second one, as well as uh, Legend of Korra, because yeah, I don't know whether I don't yeah. know whether it's cultural appropriation or what the hell, but I mean, it's made in Korea, which I understand is in Japan, yeah. but it's made in Korea. When you look at the credits, even from the first series, it's all Korean people dealing dealing with it. So. Yes, it was released on Nickelodeon, but dang, that that's an amazing show too, man. I love that one. A hundred percent. Like I was gonna say, it, it has been um, a lot of heated debate <laughs> on Reddit. You know how Reddit yeah. uh, with forums, uh, yeah. people are crazy about if uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender uh, with Aang and Korra 
Is that considered anime? Is that considered American or Westernized yeah. cartoons? I said, man, whatever it is, it is a wonderful piece of yeah, art. Yeah, it's so. incredible. Like the the homage it pays to anime, even if you just want to say that, is enough that like nobody yeah. should be upset by that show. Uh, and speaking about getting into arguments with people on Reddit, I mean, dude, that's all I do all day is get into arguments with people about my takes on on mixed martial arts all day, man. <laughs> So, you know, I'm used to that. But yeah, no, Avatar, damn good show, man. And Legend of Korra, I think even better, maybe. A little question. Like, when you said you get uh, in uh, Reddit arguments with people, what about, like, who's the greatest middleweight of all time? No, uh, I got into a lot of arguments lately. There's a girl named Kayla Harrison. Do you know her? Do you you watch it all? (laughs) Kayla Harrison is like a former... Uh, Shows, okay, okay. Yes. So Kayla Harrison is a former uh, Olympic judo champion, American judo champion who's coming on the scene now. She is jacked. Like when she no. comes to the press conferences, she's bigger than the dudes. Like she's like flexing <laughs> and she's ripped, ripped. So on our podcast, we, you know, a lot of times on my show, we'll do a conspiracy of the week, right? And it's kind of just naturally come about because I always have terrible takes on things. Like I, I have very outside the lane takes on things. When she goes on there, she's come from another organization called the PFL, a smaller organization. And now she's finally in the UFC. All I said was that the UFC has very stringent anti-doping policies. Okay. Like, like, like very tough anti-doping policies for, for over 13 years now they've had it. They were with USADA. Now they're with blah, 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 whatever. She comes Mm -hmm. from a less organization where it's not so well known what their anti-doping policy is. Mm -hmm. Not only that, she comes from the Olympics. Now, if you believe that the Olympics are clean, turn this podcast off right now. Like you're, you're insane. Like you need help, right? Like the Olympics, come on, man. We all know there's a lot of stuff going on in the Olympics, right? And if you want to say, oh, you can be tested or, oh, Olympic athletes are tested and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Armstrong, what was his name? Lance Armstrong, the cyclist guy that got caught. Mm -hmm. He was tested 300 times or something like that in his career. So like you can pass things like there's things. Anyways, long story short, I made comments about (laughs) Kayla saying that you know i'm not saying she's on anything or anything like that and and i would agree a million percent she's probably not anything now but if you were on stuff for your whole career right i think that there's a medical advantage to you even after you take get off of it like i like i've been reading some studies and stuff that say like if you've been on it even when you go off your body has muscle memory and blah blah and here's the other thing if you were on the stuff for a long like long time during those years, you were able to train more. You were able to uh, take less time mm-hmm. off of injury recovery. You were blah, 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 right? So there would be a whole bunch of benefits that even if you said physically, it just maybe mentally made you better, whatever. Better. Now you switch into the UFC and you start smashing these girls that have been there for 13 years under this stringent policy. I don't know that that's really that fair. Anyways, people yeah. got really pissed off at that. And uh, not, not only that, but Kayla Harrison started coming into my uh, Instagram and telling me that I'm a jackass and that like I'm a horrible person. And I said, yo, obviously, obviously I'm posting little clips and stuff like that, that make it seem the worst. You know what I mean? Like, cause I'm looking for, I'm looking for engagement. I never said, you know, she was, I'm just saying, Hey, look, you are like, you are very big compared to everybody else. And if we're talking the top of the sport, you know what I mean? Like, why are you like that? And nobody else is, it's like, can you imagine someone coming into the NBA being like 12 feet, 12 feet tall and just destroying everybody. And you're like, where did this guy come from? Like, how are we, how are we the best in the world? And suddenly there's this human being that's way better than everybody else that we've never, you know what I mean? It just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But that said, uh that said, there are genetic freaks. There are like people that are just crazy gifted and, and people that have crazy, determination and focus that can do those kind of things so you know maybe that is the case i don't know but anyways that's something that i fight with people or that's an example of how i'll fight with people you know so yeah yeah, yeah. 
I, see, you know, I, I don't think you said anything wrong. I mean, because like, you know, when you see freakish athletes like a LeBron or someone, LeBron, you've seen from age 10 to 13 to 15, and you've seen uh, the progression of him, you know, grow into his, his frame, his body, yeah. right? And then you see like football players or soccer players, like, you know what I'm saying, like Ronaldo, who was literally the, arguably the best you know, soccer player ever. You seeing him from a child, yeah. you know, his progression. Yeah. And it's just like, and he's like leagues above everybody, but you see everybody progression. Not someone who just, I'm not trying to no, again, yeah. extenuate, like, you know, but she just kind of comes out almost like out of nowhere. And I understand she came from a, 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 a uh, judo background, Olympic. A, uh, a, uh, and, and also, you know, um, um, a, uh, what's it called? A, uh, uh, a, Federation yeah, or yeah. something like that that wasn't that stringent and probably is not as pop uh, as popular. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Not everybody has their eye. I don't know. I'm just yeah. I'm just saying. But you know, those are the kind of things, right? But the, in 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 mixed martial arts, man, there's always stuff to argue about. There's always like you said, like the greatest of all time, right? People want to argue about that. So that's something that we always argue yeah. about. Because here's the th- here's the yeah. thing, man. If you're the greatest of all time, like even like you talk about LeBron or something, do you have to look at what they do? outside the court does that play a factor to you because it does to me i would say yes and no for if it if it uh if it leads to you know like uh back to the court what, what i mean by like michael jordan everybody uses like saying he was a bad mofo he used to gamble and he used to smoke cigars and he used to talk crap to people off uh off the court and then when he get on the court he tells them exactly just like a larry bird they were like, you know, Bert was notorious for letting, you know, like, hey, I'm going to post you up. You yep, can't yep, do yep, nothing yep. about it. And he would like, tell them exactly what he's going to do way before he does it. And everybody would be like, we can't stop him. He's a bad white boy. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. No, yeah. No, I mean, like, if you're. No, okay. I mean, gambling, depending on how, like, how delinquent you are and stuff like that. Smoking cigars, that's not that bad. I'm talking, like, if you're, like, you know, uh, getting caught for cocaine or you're like, you know, getting into car accidents oh, and running man. away and like real legal stuff. Like to me, that plays a factor. Yeah. That's a good argument. That's oh, a good right. argument that the mixed martial arts community has all the time is like whether or not your yeah. actions outside, if it's really bad, does that deteriorate from you being the greatest of all time in the sport? Like, is this, is this yeah. the guy, yeah. is this the guy that we want to put up as saying he is our poster child? He's the greatest. And then you're like, okay, but this is the guy that like was, uh, you know, like stabbed some guy in a club. You know, you're like, oh, okay, well, forget yeah, that. Don't worry about that part of him. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah, worry yeah. about that. Yeah. So, 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 you probably have a lot of hot takes when it comes to John Jones. Yeah, obviously that's who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, dude. Look, here's the thing too, because I'm Canadian, right? I'm Canadian, so like we're we're known to be very polite and we're known to be whatever. So to me, if I'm going to say that you are the best or you are whatever, I look at, I look at the wholesome photo of you, right? Like I look at like everything that encompasses who you are. If I want to say, are you like, are you the best 205 pounder fighter in the world? Sure. By all means, take that, take that accolade. No problem. But when you say the greatest of all time, when you say like one thing that we always do is we talk about putting up the Mount Rushmore of MMA athletes. And I'm sure you guys do that with like anime, right? Like who's the Mount Rushmore of anime, right? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't put some, some guy up there who has a lot of serious, like legal problems or like yeah. personal issues, right? Yeah. Like that might be weird to like yeah. idolize that person for everybody. hundred percent. Yeah. You know, cause like, cause think about it, like then kids are going to see it. Right. And kids are going to go, who's that guy? And then they Google who he is. And he's like, uh, battered his wife for blah, blah, blah. Not that he did that, but I'm just saying like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think so, man. Hold on. So, yeah, no, I, I totally, I, I totally feel you. Just gonna get canceled. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you said you know you started your podcast and uh, and it was tough because people often you know wanted you to fail and uh-huh. obviously especially with the Reddit comments how people are especially on Instagram and you know um, and that's a hard truth right so uh, what are those moments uh, like when you, you look at anime and just yourself 
and uh, stuff you've been through that push you through those challenges that may inspire you to keep going. Yeah, I think uh, so. So what you're yeah, commenting on is there's this um, question that you asked me about saying something like, what did you learn in doing your podcast or something like that? And I and I've talked about this before mm-hmm. is and I think this goes for anybody out there. You go and you start to do something. You open up your own business. You start a podcast. You start, you know, selling cookies on the street, whatever it is, right? Like whatever you want to do and you start doing it for yourself. And you always think like, okay, I've got this passion and I want to do this. And man, my friends and family are going to support me. And that's going to be my initial startup base, right? That's who's going to help me. That's going to, who's going to help get the word out. That's who's going to buy my t-shirts and who's going to like start telling other people to buy the t-shirts. You know what I mean? And then you quickly realize people do not want you to succeed in life. Like, and I've talked about this with other people. So it's not just that I'm a terrible person and I don't have good friends and family. It's like, I've talked about other people and it's like, no, like that's kind of like the similar experience from people. And I think that's really hard, man. People, you know, it can be very discouraging and, you know, for yourself, like you're on episode what now, what are, what episode are you on your podcast? Oh, for this interview, this is this is interview number uh, number seven. Or okay, eight, okay. So mistaken. what I would say is stick with it, dude. Because here's the thing: the mm-hmm. stats are, and I'm sure you know, is that most podcast, like ninety five percent of podcasts, die by episode ten. And mm-hmm. I think what happens, you know, in in my experience and from what I've seen, is that it's just because it's very hard to get support. It's very hard to get people to buy into it. And you get very discouraged when the people around you that you thought would be there for you kind of aren't. And if anything, it's yeah. almost like they kind of don't want you to succeed, whether it's jealousy or whether it's like, they're just like, like grumpy people or miserable, or it's just, it's just the way life is, right? The competitiveness of it. No, no, no you, you're not, you're yeah. not, you know, and, and I see, I seen it in my own life and I think not necessarily. So there are those individuals, right? I don't know percentage wise, where they're like jealous of me. But I think uh, a large majority, uh, and, I, and I talk to certain people in my family, they just got their own things going on yes. in their life. And usually when they see you trying to better yourself, it, it's like a kick in, the, it, like a, a kick in yeah. the mouth. And it makes people like, yeah. oh man, this person trying to um, succeed and do better. You know, oh man, what am I doing in my own life? So not necessarily to get kind of jealous, but they, it's like kind of off-putting because it sounds the alarm in their own life. And when they're not meeting the metrics, they kind of fall back from yeah. you because it's yeah. easier to fall back from you and, and, you know, keep you at a distance so they don't have to deal with, you know, their inconsistencies. Yeah, like, and look, we're getting yeah, deeply like, psychological deeply and we have, and we have no idea whether that's the truth, but that's like kind of like what it seems like sometimes. Like, it's weird. But what I would say mm-hmm. is... um yeah. And then so, so how does anime reflect on that? Look, I think the big lesson that we learn even as kids, and this is like for all stories, but anime specifically, it's overcoming that obstacle. It's overcoming the odds. It's beating the odds. It's like facing your challenges head on and beating it, whether it's, you know, whatever anime you're watching, it's always about some hero overcoming the, the, the adversity that they're faced with. Oftentimes like an mm-hmm. adversity they did not expect in their life growing up right and then they come upon it and now they've got to battle it and now they've got to beat it that's the thing man like anime teaches you that even that dorky little nerdy kid can do it you know and so so can you you know like that's the lesson in life that we all need to take away from anime is that like it's no matter how great the obstacle is ahead of you no matter how difficult the task is no matter how high that mountain is to climb you can do it you just got to put in the work and put in the effort you know and so to me, that's like kind of the story I've learned, you know, through, through my life or through, do, through doing this podcast and stuff like that. Right. It's like, oh, shoot. Like if I want to like keep doing this, I got to just do it for myself and, and you'll find fans and you'll find friends and you'll find people that will support you, but it doesn't always come from the places you thought it would. Yeah. And that is very, very true. Uh, uh, people reached out. So me being on um, uh, interview number eight, of course, I do other things uh, with my podcast all the time. So that I'm on uh, episode 30 uh, for, uh, for the other things that I do and uh, also create shorts and different things like that. So you are 100 percent right. I, I, man, it is. It's been a it's been a wild ride since I uh, started last year, man. So I, and you being on episode two. 
One one ninety two just dropped last week. Yeah. Uh, I'll do a quick plug, man. Go look me up at at Fight Insight Podcast. Yeah. Go check it out, Fight Insight Podcast. It's the we want to be your number two favorite podcast, right behind this we one. Favorite, we want to be the number two favorite <laughs> podcast. Okay, uh, if you're if, 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 if you're, no man, if you're watching an MMA podcast, I guarantee you ours is better than that one. You know, we got guests every week from around the world of uh, combat sports, like UFC athletes, one FC athletes, judges, referees, lawyers. Like we we cover all the stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a really cool shoot show fight inside podcast but yeah i'm heading i'm at one ep- episode 192 you know i don't know when i'm gonna stop dude i wanted to stop back at episode yeah. 10 and uh it just kept going it just kept going I, like i don't know i don't know how to stop now i'm on ep- i'm gonna be hitting now once i'm so close to episode 200 i'm like no i'm getting to 200 that's for sure you know uh yeah. I'm gonna get to 200 maybe i'll do 201 and then maybe stop there i have no idea but We'll see, man. Hey, maybe the fans will be like, keep going, keep going. Yeah, it, it, like, so, it's been fun, man. But I do it for myself. That's in all honesty. Like, I do it for myself. Yeah. I do it so that I can meet cool people, that I can talk about the issues that I really mm-hmm. like to ha- to talk about. And, um, yeah, and just make some friends along the way, man. And that, see, that's pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? You said, you know, you built that career in MMA and podcasting. Like, how, how were you able to do such an incredible uh, thing where you have judges on, you have MMA fighters come on and they're willing to listen to your hot takes. They're willing to listen to your, uh, um, I would say feedback and scrutiny of the sport. Um, like how did that all man? I don't know, dude, it was during the podcast. It was, sorry, during the podcast, it was during the pandemic. Uh, I, you know, I trained martial arts and then during the pandemic, you ha- everybody had to stop. So we need, I need to do something need to, to like do something in my life. Cause we were all stuck inside. And, uh, so we started the podcast. It was just for fun, really. It was just for something to do. And then, uh, next thing you know, we had some UFC fighters say that they would come on and I'm like, you know, I've got like six listeners, right. And like two of them are my mom, you know, like, but they were like, but they were like, no, they want to come on, you know? And then we would find like amateur fighters and stuff that are like, Hey, I just want experience doing interviews. Like, I just want to be on a show so that I can get used to talking to people so I can get used to engaging. I was like, Oh yeah, that's kind of a cool angle too. And then the thing was, is like amateur fighters, you know, they're just really young. So a lot of times their family is supporting them and stuff like that. So when we would have like a young fighter on, we would get more viewers from their family, you know, which was cool. Um, and then it just kept going. And like at this point now, you know, I've made connections with so many different fighters, but a lot of like managers in the sport. So sometimes I'll get, um, fighter managers reaching out to me saying like hey i got this kid and and sometimes they're ufc fighters and sometimes they're just young young kids but they'll go like hey i've got this fighter that i want to go on your podcast and it's not because my podcast is giving them great exposure i think it's because it's just the experience and it's just like it's part of the process of becoming a professional athlete um and then you know i'm really happy to say like i have had some people reach out that say like hey i want to talk about this issue because no one else is talking about it so we had a girl come on, her name is Kelsey DeSantis, and um, she fought in PFL against Clarissa Shields. Do you know Clarissa Shields? She's like a very famous boxer. Yeah. All right. Well, you're not going to be happy about this, but this girl comes on my podcast and explains how the PFL totally screwed her over the whole fight to, to make her lose. And she explains, and she explains how the PFL changes the weight class weight limit at the very last minute changes the rules like she wasn't allowed to use elbows at the very last minute um didn't put her so they're there in saudi arabia or wherever they were and they excluded her from all the media interviews like during that week so she's just standing there like in the crowd even though she's one of the fighters and her opponent is doing like she explains everything and you're like holy cow like this is crazy and so you don't you don't hear that story anywhere so you don't. Yeah. So like, it was kind of cool to be able to get some of those people that wanted to come out and share stories like that. Uh, next week, I've got a girl who's one of the plaintiffs in the UFC antitrust lawsuit. There's this big lawsuit going on. Oh. And so, yes, I see so there's that. a big lawsuit going around and I finally found a person who was willing to come on my show and talk about it. And she's one of the plaintiffs. And I was wow. like, okay, you're, you're okay to come on and talk about this. And she goes, yeah, let's do it. 
And I was like, oh, shoot. Okay. So I don't know how that's going to go because I don't know like what? how much trash he's going to talk or explain. That's a, that's because that's a weird issue too, right? Like if, for people that don't know, there's a whole bunch of fighters that are suing the UFC saying that we deserve more money at the time we fought. And that because you haven't had a monopoly on the sport, you weren't paying us. But obviously the argument is, but you signed a contract. You knew how much you were going to get paid. How can I go back and sue Coca-Cola for saying I wanted more vanilla in my vanilla Coke back when I was 10 years old? Like, it seems kind of weird, right? Like, so I don't know. But yeah, so things like that, man, it just keeps me going, keeps me excited and uh, yeah, having fun. Yeah, that's very, and I, I see how that's very intriguing. I mean, geez, Louise, man, because I saw the, I saw the suit, and it's been out for a very long time. Um, what, a couple of years? The so lawsuit, far? the lawsuit, is, I think, no, uh, I think the lawsuit has been like almost ten years, maybe. Like it's taken a long time for them to get this going. Yeah, yeah. class action. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So, I guess trying to get uh, people to come on, you know, more people come on to uh, to advocate the story, and then also tell their parts. You know, of course, it gets more traction and better. So, okay, that's yeah, pretty yeah. cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. So, you know what? We, you know, we often see like with anime characters and different things, you know, they have great mentors. Who was your great mentor, you know, as you started this uh, podcast journey? Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, uh, I'll go, I'll go outside a little okay. bit of outside just my podcast, but I had a mentor mm-hmm. just in my general life for my normal civilian career, uh, outside okay. of podcasting and MMA commentating. I had a mentor. Um, he was a guy that I knew worked, um, in the industry that I was, and he was just a senior guy. And I got along well with him, met him at some sort of networking event. And then I, he kind of went to be my mentor. And what I'll say, the biggest thing that he told me is that he said, you have to think about your career and this goes for your life, whatever. Okay. But you have to think about your career as a triangle. And he says, the peak can only be as high as your base is wide. And so what he said is that as you're sitting there in life or in your career and you're doing stuff, you have to do other things. You can't be so singularly focused because then your base is very thin. You got to go do other things. You got to play other sports. You got to meet other people. You got to engage in other activities, play other games, do other, whatever it is, watch other movies, listen to other music, just diversify and broaden yourself. And the more you do that and you widen that base, now you can achieve so much more. So your, your, your peak gets higher and higher in that triangle. And, um, you know, that was a, a good lesson I learned from a mentor that is so incredibly valuable to me in like everything I do. You know, you never, Jeez. never pigeonhole yourself into one area, never pigeonhole yourself into just doing one specific thing. Really try and do more and more. And the more you can do that, the better you become as a person. Yeah. yeah. You did not lie. Yeah. You know, I never thought of it like that because I, and I always, I was told, right, and, and go do other things, you know, go have fun, you know, really uh, don't just try to work on, you know, something yourself, but work on everything. Like, you know, make sure you, you know, have fitness, you know, you go run, make sure you, you know, you have good friends, yeah. not a lot of friends, but just a handful of friends that you can talk to, you know, and that does make sense. Yeah. A lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that was a big one. Yeah. Man. Yeah. That- the question. So, you know, if you could mentor someone, what advice uh, for for your own journey that you would give to them on the way as you pass it on? Um, so one thing I think that I've learned so through doing the, through doing the podcast was we had, I think it was one of my first female guests ever. Uh, her name is Ashley Evan Smith, Rebel Girl. Ashley Evan Smith. She's a UFC fighter. UFC, you know, OG. Uh, you know, yeah. she's a good looking girl. So if you're going to go look that up, uh, Ash, Ashley Evan Smith, <laughs> rebel girl, she came on the podcast and she said, close mouths. Don't get fed. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. Wait, do you know that? Do you know that, uh, saying? Yeah. We used to say it all the time. In oh, dang. Okay, dude, I've never, 
I had never heard that before, man. Closed mouths don't get fed. And it was something that to me, I was like, geez, Louise, that makes so much sense. Right. And you're just like, yeah. And so for the listeners that don't understand what the hell I'm talking about, closed mouths don't get fed, meaning go ask for stuff. You're not, stuff isn't just going to come to you while you just sit on your butt. Right. You need to go out and you need to go out and ask for things, right? Don't be afraid to ask for things. What's the worst that happens? You get nothing. You were getting nothing anyways. So there's no, you're in no worse position, but I'll tell you. So the, the, the thing that I learned and the thing that I would teach someone is that closed mouths don't get fed. Anything you want, just go out and ask for it. Obviously do the work, obviously put yourself in a good position to, to receive it, but ask man like you would be so surprised at like the things that you can get when you just ask and i'm not talking like financial or or blah 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 but just like if you want help ask for help and people will give you help if you want to learn something ask someone how to do something and they will teach you you know like as it related to me as a podcast host right it was just like ask can would you like to come on my show ask ask you know i had Dricus Duplessis, the, the, the champion, like the, one of the greatest people, Bobby King Green, who's my favorite UFC fighter of all time. He came on my show and it's only because I kept asking people, do you know him? Can I get in contact? Right. You just got to ask. Uh, right now I'm commentating out on the East coast of Canada for an organization called Fight League Atlantic. And so for the last, I, I just passed my one year anniversary, but I've been like on almost every single one of their pay-per-views. I'm now commentating mixed martial arts. Do you understand? That's like, that's such a ridiculous dream. It's such a ridiculous dream that I never would have imagined that I would have been able to do. But through everything, I ended up meeting the owners there, Derek and John, and, you know, kind of just asking and saying like, hey, I'd really like to do it, man. I I really think I could do a good job. I think I want to be a commentator. Like if, if I can do that. And they gave me an opportunity and thank God I'm not terrible. And, 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 and I've been doing it, man, you know, and it's like, no way. Do you understand? Like there is zero place in my world where if I had sat on my butt, you know, playing Mario Kart, that nobody was calling you. No one, no one's calling Timmy B to say, Hey, can you be an MMA commentator? Even though that would be a dream in my mind, even though it's something I think I could do good at, you got to go out there and ask, man. So for all those listening, for all those watching, like go, you know, if there's something that you want, Start working towards it and then ask people how to do it, how to get there, or, or, or if you can get it. No, but you're right. So we, so in the military, we say that, especially in the Air Force, and the one we uh, say a lot is uh, the squeaky wheel gets through. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't know where that came from, or what we say it all the time. They're like, "Hey, squeaky wheel gets the grease." So if you don't say nothing, you don't get nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, that's a million. Yeah, that's a million percent. Yep. I love it. So we're going to, you know, uh, we're going to, I got two more questions for you. The first question, if you can give one piece of advice to someone who's trying to be successful based on their favorite anime character or your own life experience, what would Wait, isn't that the question I just answered? That's the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. But also like, um, like when I say like a, a piece of advice, like, you know, like, Wake up early. Oh, you know, oh, like, oh. As some people say you know, at five AM is something good to do, you know, for themselves or you know yeah. some people have certain things that they subscribe to oh. that they think that was the catalyst for them being successful. Um the, the make the hard choices when it comes to relationships with 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 um, friend with friends, with partners, with whatever it is make the hard choice don't get stuck in like lousy friendships don't get stuck in lousy relationships boot get the hell out of there and just and just move on there's so many good people in this world man you don't need to waste your time with lousy people just cut it off see you later that's that's the advice do it you're just wasting time you're wasting time yep facts and then the last question is is like if your life uh were an anime what would be the title and why? Jeez Louise, that's a good one. Uh, you know what? I'll go, I'll go to what my walkout song would be if I ever fought. Okay. And I was too old when I started training and stuff like that. So I never fought, but 
uh, my walkout song was by Maestro Fresh West, Canadian rapper, right? Let Your Backbone Slide. Okay. okay, super famous. Maestro Fresh West, he has a song called Underestimated. And I think that would be the title, okay. Underestimated, man. Like it's, you know, I underestimated myself. Did I ever think that I'd be doing this stupid yeah. podcast for 200 episodes? No. Do you think I ever thought I'd be a commentator for Fight League Atlantic? No. Right? So underestimated, man. I think it's, uh, I think that would be the title. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. That's what's up. Well, thank you so very much, Timmy B. Uh, check out Fight, um, Atlant- uh, Fight League Atlantic and Timmy B's podcast for everyone listening. Until next time, keep it fun. And remember, don't forget to spread your wings and enjoy life to its fullest. All right. Peace, guys. Thanks, buddy. No problem.